What is up, everyone? I am Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of Father's Day. Of Dad Mance. Papa Mance. Big Papa Mance. <laughs> so, Richard, this episode is going to come out on Father's Day. It's one of the days that like a lot of people, I think, take for granted. Uh, yeah, 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 it is. Because you know why? We get the short end of the stick, Sean. Well, I mean, you know, back in the day, like school got over like at the end of May. And so mom would get the magnet macaroni thing. Mm, the coffee cup that got painted on. Yeah, what dads get? A tie. <laughs> a tie. I don't <laughs> even a- wear ties. A- ashtray. <laughs> I don't even smoke. <laughs> It's not even something that they made. It's like an ashtray they bought at a gas station. <laughs> you could put your loose change in it, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Richard, we took this opportunity because you and I have, have mentioned wanting to do this for a while and try to get with those father figures in our life and even our kids, except I, my kids, obviously not old enough. But I have a recording from when we first kind of, I, I don't remember if it was right before we got home or right after we got home. I haven't even listened to it yet. So I'm, I'm still <gasps> going to edit this episode on the fly. Ooh. But, this is uh this is your first this is your first Father's Day as a father. Well, it was basically like a month here, month old last one. So kind of it's my second Father's Day technically, but really my first Father's Day where I've kind of been in in it. Right. So you're gonna walk in, you're gonna walk into his room, and then he's gonna be he's gonna be in his bed, and he holds up an ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're gonna be like, I don't even smoke. Guess I gotta start smoking. <laughs> all right, my, all right, <laughs> Tiffany, I gotta go out and buy a pack of smokes, and then I'll never come back. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got a story. <laughs> but we want to take this opportunity because we it, people always talk about like, oh, I wish I had this conversation with. And we've got mics, Richard. We've got recording equipment. So we said we're not going to be the kind of people that say, "Man, I wish I had that conversation with." We went ahead and had those conversations. Yeah, it's true. So sit back, relax, and, you know, if you get a chance, record something with your dad today. So happy Father's Day, everybody out there. We'll be back on the butt end of this to close it out. I like I like what you just said because, I, you know, we're like, hey, let's record audio with our dads. Let's record, like, us just sitting there, like, BSing with our fathers. I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea or whatever. But it wasn't until I actually sat down and had a conversation, had a conversation with my father for like 30, you know, I think we talked for like 30 minutes. And I now I'm now thinking like, hey, I have this. I have this forever. And that's like that seems awesome to me. Like, that's really kind of a like it's kind of like a powerful thing. Yeah, I got to sit down with my dad and it was like it was awkward at first. Because I, I think you did yours over the phone, right? Yeah, we yeah we skyped because because I'm I'm in I'm in Missouri and he's living in San Diego, so I did I did it over Skype. Yeah, uh, but like my dad came up and so we sat and talked over them actually in face to face, which I think made that a little bit more difficult. Maybe I yeah I could see that I could see that because he had a mic in front. Of him. It was the first time he's ever talked into a mic. Um, mm-hmm. and so I didn't really have a big game plan on what to talk about, but just kind of talked about like the last two years of, you know, him having some new grandkids, you know, growing up with me, what it was like. Um, and he shared a good story of, uh, when he was in high school. So, you know, a couple good things there. So. Yeah. I, I guess what, what could I preview this with? Um, I learned, I did learn why, why my father like a lot, of, like like the, all the things that I like gush about now, things like Star Wars and Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Like all that stuff, I learned all that from him. Like all that interest and the person, my gateway to to that entire world was through him. And I found it really kind of cool that he was. You know, he didn't have that. He didn't have like my grandfather wasn't that kind of guy. And and. I mean, it's nothing against him, but those things my dad discovered on his own. And so it was interesting to see how how somebody finds that stuff on their own, because mm. it was kind of it was easy for me. It was easy for me to get into comic books. It was easy for me to get into Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. It was easy for me to fall in love with Star Wars because because of my father, because he had comic books. He had Star Wars on VHS. He had a library of D and D books, so he was kind of guiding you into that life. Yeah, exactly. So it's all his fault. <laughs> and to preview my dad a little bit, so the the thing that like he, we weren't really like he doesn't play D and D, he doesn't watch comics, 
but he took uh, the opportunity to coach our little league team. He had never played baseball in his life, like besides any kind of like, tossing back and forth. But he took that opportunity to do something because that's what he wanted to be a part of, and that's like one of my biggest loves is baseball. He doesn't mm-hmm. have too much of a care for it because he's you know his favorite part of it was. And it's interesting we talk about like his favorite part was when we were like three and four year olds because he's like there was it was just fun seeing the kids out there playing. Um, so I think that was kind of a, a pretty touching moment. You'll probably actually catch my dad. Cr- I think he almost cried like probably a half a dozen times. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was now cool. I now I know where you get it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Where do I begin? OK, here we go. Here's 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 my first question. OK, most of most of uh, like a lot of the cooler things I used to define myself, like being super into Star Wars. Planes and Dragons, knowing like all this different stuff. A lot of it, me personally, I learned from you, from my father. So you obviously didn't have that luxury. So my question is, how how is it that you got into got into all this stuff? Because because I had I had you know I had a source, I had an obvious source. You obviously did not, and it it doesn't seem like something, especially especially then. It didn't seem like something that a lot of people stumbled into. Obviously, so so how did that come about? I think for me, a lot of it was an escape aspect. That's why I got into it. Because you know, when I was younger, my mom passed away, and school kept me busy, and it was just a means to escape. And you know, all these all these things were just coming up. You know, Dungeons and Dragons were just starting, and Star Wars was just coming out. Right. You know, it was right on the edge of it. It was, you know, the excitement of something new that's never been done before. And like, okay, so, yeah. so like, so like D and D, like, did that? Were you like at a gaming store, and you then somebody was like, "Hey, here's this little box with these, you know, little booklets in it," or? It was a a bookstore, I think, where I first saw it. <laughs> oh, okay. It was just first. I mean, just I mean, first came out. Huh. It was just like the the book. It wasn't even a book. It was a pamphlet. Yeah, yeah. And it was. I mean, that's and me and me and my brother. I mean, started playing it just from this pamphlet, just making things up, and I mean, we didn't even have figures back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they said the they said the first the first release of the game. It was this little cardboard box, and it had these three pamphlets in it. And right. One, one was for making characters. And one was for a dungeon master, and one was just like just had monsters it had, like, in it. Cardboard punch outs or something for characters you could use. Yeah, they had little <laughs> cardboard things that you would fold the cardboard into a little exactly, triangle, yeah. and it had and it had characters painted on it. That's what it was. That's what that's where it started. Oh, that's... We had many adventures with little cardboard cutout things. It was crazy. It was fun though. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so. And then, and then, you know, I mean, obviously things like Star Wars, it's like, oh, hey, this, there's this cool movie that's coming out in theaters. And so did it, so I guess, so did it start with, with Dungeons and Dragons or did it go, did it go back farther? Cause you're a very avid reader. Like you're, you're, I would say you're one of the more well-read people that I've known. Like you're, I think it started with the reading, you know, cause, cause I used to read as, you know, like, I like Pulp Fiction's. Like real pulp, like the old shadow, and right, right, and those kind of, and I got interested in that stuff early, and that was it was all just escape. It was all like you know, like the Dungeon Dragons, like you know, that was early comics. Then we got into comics, and and everything. It, I mean, it kind of opened up from there. I mean, yeah, it's it's. I I guess that's what that's what I find that's why I find so so interesting is like like I feel like today take like my son for example, like he has things like video games and comic books and, and stuff like that. Like that's all, that's all mainstream. That's all like in, that's part of the zeitgeist now, you know, there's, there's comic book characters on the screen and there's, you know, star Wars toys in every aisle. And there's, and there's, and there's all this stuff and you go on the internet and it's, you know, references to rolling a critical hit. And, and I mean, when, uh, but I remember even, even when I was a kid, like that, uh, I mean, that stuff was, reserved for a, a very select few that went and sought it out and so well, I think, yeah, the, the internet makes it makes it too easy and you know the kids nowadays i think are poor for not being able to use their imagination either for reading or for playing because it's all right in front of them yeah and I, I mean i think you know 
back then we didn't have that. We didn't have a thing where you just turn on. There was all it was all there, and you could just play the game. You had to make it up. You had to take pen and paper and put it down in front of you and just do it by hand. And that's what we did. I mean, and I think we used our mind more and we used our imagination more. And when you create a world, you really escaped into a world because you created it. So I guess you're saying it's uh, it's it's more convenient now. Like my 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 oldest daughter, like Kylie, she really liked that show on MTV, The Shannara Chronicles. And I was like, those are all, I was like, that's based on books. She's like, that was a really cool show. I'm, and, and it didn't get picked up for a second season or whatever. And she was really kind of bummed about it. I was like, there's a whole, I was like, there's tons of books of, there's tons of Shannara books. I don't even know how many there are. There's like, oh God, I don't even know how many. There's at least eight or nine just on, just on one story alone. And then there's, you know, books about stuff that happened before and stuff that happened after. And so, so I guess you're saying that it's, since it's more convenient now, but at the same, it's at the expense of using your brain. Totally at the expense. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, what new stuff's coming out? All the stuff is based on older stuff. I mean, Batman was based on the shadow and Star Wars. I mean, everything now is coming another Star Wars, another superhero, another, what new? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I totally I started when I read Lord of the Rings, you know, back in, 30 years ago or 40 years ago when no one was reading Lord of the Rings, you know, yeah, yeah. you got your imagination working and so I'm imagine, world, yeah. when, you're, when you're a kid, it opened a world of just wonder. I was going to say, I'm imagining you at 10 years old with this little Frodo lives button walking, walking yeah. down the halls at school. And that's right. See, but you we didn't have nerds back then. We probably did not No, no. <laughs> you before that was even kind of, but I was one. No, you didn't. That's yeah, that's exactly right. See, but read but, a lot, and read comics, and played games. And... But see, your your school life was different than than my school life because you went at the age of at the age at twelve, you got shipped off to military school. Now I'm now my question in there is when I was when I was younger, you would threaten me with military school whenever whenever I fucked up. True. So, so, so I guess my, my question is, did you fuck up? Yeah. 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 I, I was running with the bad crowd. Well, you lived in a much bigger city than I, you grew up in Chicago. Like I would go up there over the summer and hang out and, you know, hang out at like an arcade and whatnot. But I mean, you were there 24 yeah, seven. Hanging around with the, we, in our neighbor, we didn't grow up in a good neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. and started hanging out with gang kids and stuff. It could have gone bad, I think. And but in the military academy, we played D and D and stuff. I mean, we'd have weekends off, and we'd have huge board games, and we'd have D and D, and you know, it kept kept it going. That's awesome. I mean, it was an escape. Yeah. Now, people, you just turn on the computer and escape. But yeah. how much of the brain did you use then? And spend the whole week, you know, making your dungeon engines and planning your monsters. Yeah, I mean, I did that, that when I was, I've I've got you know two or three notebooks sitting around that's just full of scribblings and maps and all sorts of crap, you know? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, that makes perfect sense that, and, and I, and I do agree, you know, I mean, in, in the world that's devoid of an original idea. So my question is, do, will you, do you think it'll eventually come back around the introduction of, you know, of, of video games and the internet, especially when you, put that out there are kids ever going to be going back because i'll tell you what like for example my kids play minecraft like crazy like if they have free minutes they play minecraft graphically it looks about the same as say an atari 8-bit graphics it's a bunch you know it's blocks but with this they can build houses and they can do all this stuff do you think we're going to eventually see like the other side of the cycle I'm kind of worried, you know, that kids are kind of lose their sense of wonder because they could open up the internet and see so many things, both good and bad. Yeah, they, they grow up so quick; they don't have a chance to have that like magical period of not an adult. Yeah, to explore their imagination, explore life. Instead, they turn on their phones, they turn on the net, and there's some pretty bad graphic stuff kids can see and get into. And you know, it kind of takes away, I think, from what could be. Yeah. I think I, we can get there again, but I don't know. There's you know, 
society's changed. You walk in a restaurant, you see a family sitting down to dinner, and every one of them's on their phone. Yeah. Like, what is that? That bothers the ever loving shit. I mean, there's been times where I'll where I'll make dinner, and my kids will all sit around the table, and they'll all bring a tablet, and they'll set the tablet down. They'll start. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, we're not. Do-. I was like, no, we're not doing that. I was like, yeah. we're sitting down, we're having dinner. I was like, you can bear without having a screen in front of your face for 20 minutes and right. just sit they and have a meal. They don't need to. You don't need to do that. I mean, you know, there was no cell phones when I was younger. People wouldn't, weren't on the phone all the time. If you wanted to call me, it was at my home phone when I was home right. to answer it. If right. I wasn't there, you, how you were going to get me? I was, you know, you weren't able to call people 24 hours or message them or, you know. It's changed. It's changed everything. You know, you don't have that quiet time. Yeah, I yeah, I totally agree. I've found myself guilty of it. I'll be up late, just you know, I'll be up late at night, just fucking around on my phone or fucking around doing something on the internet. And there'll, there'll be a point where I'll stop and be like, you know, I'm on, the only reason that I'm awake is because I'm doing this, and I'm not really doing right. anything at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, I mean, if you read, I mean, any biographies with like the. A lot of real big authors or mm-hmm. writers and stuff. I mean, when things come to them, is that quiet time, a time when nothing's happening, when their mind's free to explore, to you know. And we don't get that. You have quiet time for five seconds. Like, hey, you got a message. Yeah. How you how you doing? <laughs> what you up to? Want to drink a beer? Oh <laughs> God. I was just gonna invent something amazing. No, I was this close. Do. I was this close to curing <laughs> cancer, and you just fucked it all up. That's right. Thanks. People dying of cancer, that's your fault now Because you decided to send me a text You decided to like my Facebook post Okay yeah. so the... I think we had like a national turn off your phone day wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea There you go People are too used to just having their phone in their face 24 hours 24-7 The thing that strikes me so much too Is the fact that it happened so fast From the from 2000 It's, you know, the iPhone came out In 2006 2007 and it would seem like from that point on then we went from the cell phone was something that sat in my pocket to something that's in like in my hand like an extra appendage yeah. it's yeah. it's crazy how how quickly that happened so the whole reason that i that i was doing this doing this in general is in honor of Father's Day, so I'm gonna glean from you as much fatherly wisdom as I as I can. Now I have a 17 year old, I have a 12 year old, and I have a nine year old. How what was it like dealing with with multiple kids in the house? Because because with you there were four of us. There was me and I had three sisters. So there was four of us in the house. Would you feel like being a father of four? Like you earned your badge. You know, I tell people, people are like, oh, do you have any kids? And I said, yeah, I have three. And people like get wide eyed at me They're like, oh, my God, three kids. I'm curious, being a father of four, like how did that how did that roll for you? I say, you know, you have to have patience. I mean, they're going to make mistakes. That's just you have to have, you know, you have to show them guidance, but you have to give them room to make their own mistakes because that's yeah. how they learn, you know? Yeah. And you can't, you know, and you can't sit there and be too tied on them, too disciplined or else. It could go the other way, you know. They could get, they could get pretty away from you. Well, the problem that I've, I feel like I've been having, especially with, especially with my oldest ones, I feel like there's times where like I hold too tight. You know, big scary, big scary world in the, you know, in in the world, big scary things in the world, and so like because you've done most of the things when when they were that age, you you're at, did most of the things, the big scary stuff, and <laughs> worse, and much worse. So you it, do the scary stuff. And, and so it's it's like and, and it has nothing to do with like, I don't feel like, you know, she's going to, you know, put a bag on a stick and start hitch and, and start running, running the rails across the country. But I feel like there's a lot in the world that I I, I have this overwhelming sense to protect. I don't, I don't feel like you're emotionally ready to deal with a lot of these like big issues, but. But she's seventeen. Like right. in in less in in a year, she's gonna be an adult, or she's right. gonna be considered an adult. So I guess my question, like, what am I waiting around for? How do you ease that in? Like, there's big, heady stuff, like you know, relationships and men and jobs and hard, like the hardcore adult shit. Yeah. 
yeah. paying your bills, you know, being being a functioning adult. And it's not a question that I don't think she's capable. I think she's more than, she's definitely more than capable. I think she's a lot more capable than I was when I when I when I left the house. There's the, there's a lot of stuff that I don't I I worry that she's not emotionally ready for and a a misstep could be a could be something that sets her back, you know, years. I mean, you have to be sure. I mean, you have to be sure that always you let her know you're always here for support. You know, she, you have to have her feel that she can always talk to you. That's the big thing. So she can't be out there by herself. You know, she can't feel like she can't come back and say, "Hey, whatever. It's about a boy. What the, what's going on?" Or else, I mean, that's when they really make a really bad mistake. If she feels like there's always something, that there's a path open to her that she could come and and talk and because she's getting to the point now where i mean you're really not going to have much control right she could you know she rebels there's not much you can do yeah. but you you got to be sure it's open so that she always feels like she has someone she can talk to she no matter how bad it is there's someone there that she could turn to because if there's not that's those are the ones that usually you know go real bad when they think they're they're alone when they feel totally alone when they feel isolated you know mm-hmm. out there yeah that's so as a parent, you just be the one that, you know, you've done a good job with her up to 17. You kind of gave her a good groundwork. You got to put your laurels on. Okay, I gave her a good base to start from. Now I want to be here because that's where you're at now. I want to be here for, you know, I want her to know I'm always here. You know, you might, maybe that's it. Maybe I just, maybe I just don't trust my parenting skills enough to be like, okay, well, I, th- I think, I think, I think you're good. I think you're good. Off you go. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> I, I screwed up somewhere. You know, you know, I, I haven't taught you everything well, yet. Well, you're not going to have a choice, though. Once, yeah. Once she turns 18, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Now you got to you gotta kind of change the role and be there saying, you know, I'm here always. Yeah. You ever need anything, you know? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Ch- I like that. Change You change the role. Like, you know, you start out as the teacher and right. then you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Okay. That covers that covers the 17 year old. Okay. So now the 12 year old. Here's the thing with a twelve year old. He's starting to get mouthy. Like he's starting to get he's like he's starting to get kinda like and I don't know if it's just like a boy thing, but he's like I talk to him about like say he does something, he's doing something bad, he's fighting with his sister, like who knows? Or or he's doing something that I'm not agreeing with. And so I will tell him, Hey, don't do this. And then he wants to get then he wants to get lippy about it. And he wants to argue about it. You know, I, I totally understand, you know, he's he's at a point where like, hey, you know. I, I think I think I know some stuff. Let me it, it's him showing his independence. But, right. But at the time, but in the moment, I'm like, don't argue with me. Just do what I say. Like I <laughs> like I'm your parent. Like I don't I'm tired. I, I don't want to have to explain to you why. Just understand that I'm doing what's best. Twelve year olds you're still shaping, you know, that's where <sighs> take stuff away and do stuff like that. Well, I guess I guess the question is, how do you deal with a mouthy with a mouthy kid? Like, do I just I mean, because, you know, he's the boy and he wants to be all, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, do I just haul off and punch him? Because that's that's where I feel like that's where we're heading. <laughs> I feel like we're heading to the moment where I'm like, you know what? No, we're done here. Whap. Right. In the, uh. That's hard. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I mean, I was just. Is. I was just telling the story, uh, I, like we, Sean, I was recording the show with Sean, and I, I was telling the story that I left the house and I was just gonna go like outside and play, and so I grabbed one of those one of those uh, rattan practice swords, one of those rattan swords, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go outside and play, and so I left the house, I went down the block behind this behind that that strip mall that was by the house, so I'm out there, I'm like whacking on plants, like just hanging just totally by myself and I'm hanging out and whacking on plants or whatever. And these cops pull up and they're like, Oh, we had a call that someone was brandishing a weapon or no, they they get out of the car and they're like, sir, put down the weapon. And I look at them weird. And then I look down, I see the thing in my hand. I'm like this. And I hold it up. As soon as I hold it up, they like put their hands on their hips. They're like, sir. And I was like, Whoa, 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 Whoa. And I drop it and they handcuff me. And put me in the back of the car and drive me home. Okay, <laughs> you were not you were not at home. Mom was home. Mom opens the door and sees her handcuffed son, hand, arms behind his back, handcuffed son. She sends me upstairs. Now at this point, 
actually during during the ride home and especially when i got home my thoughts were not oh i'm in uh, like oh i'm in trouble with the police oh mom's gonna yell at me like those weren't my thoughts my thought my thoughts were my dad is gonna beat the crap out of me when he comes <laughs> home because anything that involved police was <laughs> Just never ended well for me. Never <laughs> ended well at home. Like I, I always, I, I said, I said my father was a very quiet guy. Like he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't a yeller. Mom was the yeller. He wasn't a yeller. He kept his cool. But if if there was a if there was an officer involved, that's when, that's when, that's when Dad would blow his stack. And that's when, <laughs> like I remember once I was drinking a soda and Mom's yelling and yelling and yelling at me, and I was and like I was looking down at the ground, like just no eye contact or whatever. And here comes Dad, just whack with that soda right out of my hand, and my eyes went like dinner plate wide. I was like, oh no, this is bad. Because my thing was always like. If you push, if, if if I've if I've pushed this man to the point that he is now ticked, like it's over for me. So maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I just need to just, just speak softly and kill you. Exactly. <laughs> the nine-year-old. I feel like the nine-year-old treats me like a slacker, like a slacker parent. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I. I don't know. There's not really anything advice-wise I can ask you about the nine-year-old because. I feel That's what like happens as, as, as they go on, you're just like, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So by the third, I'm just like, whatever, yeah, whatever, right. whatever. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm just tired. <laughs> please don't just please don't do anything involving police. And I'm fine. <laughs> like, it's it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Are there any parental anecdotes? Like, let's say let's say I'm not your son. Let's say I'm just, you know, a guy sitting next to you in a bar. It's just, you know, talking about how he just became a dad. What is the what is the parental vice you have for this for this for Joe Schmo sitting at the bar? Hey, I'm I'm gonna be a dad. Do you have any advice for for the new father? You you could just say like, oh my god, kids are crazy. There was this one time that my kids blah 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 blah. Is there any like in terms of moments where you where you said to yourself, What why? Why did I why did I do this? Why did I decide to go down this road? What was what was the, what was your craziest, most surreal parenting moment? You know, really growing up, there was not a whole lot of bad ones. The girls partying in the back was yeah, yeah. Me and my own, I found all this alcohol and stuff. Didn't know what was going on. Oh, when they had a bunch of uh, bottles and bottles, and they're all underage. I was out of the house by then, so luckily I was free and clear. There's been a few crazy moments. Steph hit a car when she was drunk. Uh, uh, I uh I I had I did all my drinking at the neighbor's house. I felt like I felt like that was key. I did all my drinking. Uh, we would go next door and and party and then all and then me and all my friends would drag our drunken asses to my house and up <laughs> up and up to my room and then everybody would sleep until like 2 in the afternoon. That's a good one. I think uh, warm down pretty much that <laughs> that's they got away with more than they should have. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. That's fair. I could, I can, I could totally, I can totally see that. That's a lot of times they came along like, oh, wait, you guys are partying in the back, <laughs> yeah. really, in the back house, having huge parties. There's big bottles of vodka everywhere. Yeah, and you're on it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I never did that. We never, or I, ne I, yeah, I never did that. I never actually had like a party in the house. But to be fair, like I had a, f I had a fairly big room and i also with the, there was a carport roof i had a window directly to so i had access to the outside so it was pretty much i mean it, <laughs> it took a little bit of climbing and a little bit of effort but it was pretty much like my own separate apartment without a kitchen because i had a bathroom up, I, I had a bathroom too so the only thing i was you, you had joey though that's your thing yeah yeah <laughs> The son you wish you had. <laughs> oh, poor Joey. What are these doing? I'm today? still friends with him on Facebook. I prom. I'm still friends with him on Facebook. I have no idea what he's what he's doing. I'd have to. I'd have to actually look it up. But I think. I think we've covered. I think we've covered the gamut. Answered all the questions that I wanted to know, and then also hopefully gave some. Fairly decent parenting advice. Sean doesn't have the luxury of having like older kids. Yeah, he just turned one. That's good. You just nod your head and say, it's coming. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I yeah, that's what I do. So that's that's my it's thing is I feel like I'm I feel like I'm close to the other side of it. So hopefully I can start breathing easy. But okay. anyway, regardless, happy Father's Day. The other reason I the other reason I definitely wanted to do this is because now I have you on audio and that is forever. I can be seven <laughs> I can be seventy years old and I can still and I can still I can still pull back on this. True. It's a moment in time that I have now captured for myself. Is it weird talking in front of a mic? Yeah. yeah it <laughs> is. Uh, I know uh, when Grandpa and I did it, I just had this. Because I figured with mics and stuff, it wouldn't, I don't know how well he would do with it. Yeah. But, uh, when I first turned it on, like I didn't even really, I said, hey, Grandpa, I want to start recording stuff. Just chit chat. And I didn't even get to hit record. And he was already busting into some stories. He's already talking, huh? Yeah. Uh, so we're doing the Father's Day episode. Uh, and uh, I know sometimes we chit chat about different things. Um, just trying to get, just talk about different things. I don't know, growing up and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I just try to think like, uh, I know, like, I don't know, I, I guess, uh, like, what was, uh, do you remember like the, the first day bringing me home, I guess, from the hospital or anything yep, like that? Yep, that was one of the, the best days of my life, uh, seeing my first son born and uh, brought a lot of joy to my life. And uh, it's been uh, very good since then. And um, now we got uh, two grandsons in our life and got a daughter in our life and uh, life is just great right now and couldn't ask for it to be any better. Was uh <clears throat> do they compare about the same when like the first two days at the hospital with the grandkids compared to the Michelle and I or Oh yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um just seeing the tiny little babies and uh, getting to hold them for the first time and um, very very joyful. What's your uh was the fa- I know mom used to say like cuz you used to work later when I was first born, right? Right, yeah. So you would come home, get me out of bed and play with me? Yep. Uh, come home, get you out of the crib and wake you up and just uh, hold you and feed you and uh, just enjoying life. What was, the, what was your favorite part about when Michelle and I were little? Um, just being able to go outside and do things with you, um, watching you take your first steps and, uh, and like I said, taking your fishing and going out to Grandpa's and Watching you two little ones ride on the tractor with him. Uh, just just seeing everybody enjoy you, your little ones running around. It's hard to believe it's been almost over, until it's been over 30 years. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to believe that time's gone by that fast already. Yeah. And now we got a uh, grandson's going to be two and one that's over a year old. And time's just flying. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I know you got like plans for like out of grandpa's building the, the pond and stuff for them up to come down and go swimming and yeah. hang out. Yep, exactly. want to. Gonna put up a little shed and uh, run electric in it and air conditioning and probably get some sand brought in. Have a little beach on the pond so we can do some swimming and fishing and um, cookouts and uh, just get the little guys out and enjoying the wilderness a little bit. That's gonna be crazy when, like, right now we see them when they're playing, like they're just at the age now where they can kind of interact. So like last weekend when we were down was really the first time where I think they <clears throat> both were kind of like fully interacting with each other. And you just think, like, each time they meet, it's just going to be even more so. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the bond will just keep getting tighter and tighter all the time. And uh, see them little two guys get together and, and, and enjoying each other. And um, then watch them back, sitting back and watch them fight when they fight. You know, it's, <laughs> it's going to be kind of fun. Out in the yard wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> after you graduated high school, um, what were some of, kind of your plans after that? I don't, I don't remember really mentioning much about that. Um, Originally, I was going to go to mechanic school, um, do uh, auto and diesel mechanics, but uh, during my senior year of high school, I was hired on at Pepsi-Cola, and um, when I graduated, I had a full-time job there, so I just continued my work there, and uh, I've got 37 years in there now, and uh, wouldn't change anything. It's been a good good life and a good living, and provided a, a good income for my family. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I was in third grade, because where, where you guys live now, we're pretty much I grew up, was where you grew up. Correct, yeah. Um, Grandpa, you said, bought that in... 63. 63, and then you guys bought it in 96? Six, I think it was, yeah. So there's like a bit of property that's yeah. been in, like kind of in the family for over 50 years, pretty yeah. much. And then uh, where Grandpa's living now, um, he moved there the day you was born. He uh, still kids me about uh, had it all planned so I didn't <laughs> have to help him move, but they did get to use my truck. <laughs> That's a, it's kind of cool, like, both those places being, like, around forever. Because, I mean, even when, before we moved out to that property, Grandpa and I would go hunt out there all the time. Yeah. 
I remember there was a story where he was rabbit hunting. I think he missed like two or three. And of course, me being a little shit, you know, four year old, five year old, I'm like, Grandpa, you're just not the greatest hunter in the world, <laughs> are you? I yep. Think- he, he enjoyed his rabbit hunting. Um, enjoyed taking kids hunting for the first time and teaching them how to hunt. And he got a lot of enjoyment out of that. Yeah, I kind of wish uh, one of these times I hope I get a deer out there for him to see. I know he hasn't been able to really see me get one. Yeah, yeah he's, he mentioned that last year he, that he hoped that you would get one. So I had a nice one walk in front of me, but I just missed it. <laughs> That'll happen. Um, but uh, with the things we're doing out there with the property, we hope to draw the deer in and uh, get more deer and see more activity. I know every time I've been out there, I at least see something. So yeah. you, you've done a lot of good work out there. Yeah, we uh, actually we've seen a lot of deer this year doing the planting of the soybeans and uh, everything else we've done out there. So, like I say, I hope to have a good year out there this year. So, raising two kids, what's uh, what are some, like, your best memories from, from that growing up? Um, there's, just, there's so many of them. Um, growing up, watching you guys grow up, uh, watching you play sports, Michelle being involved in uh, uh, cheerleading and uh, going to watch the games that you guys, guys did, helping you coach uh, your baseball team and, from kindergarten all the way up through high school, uh, that was very enjoyable. Um, then watching Michelle grow into the the woman she is today, just very very joyful to watch two kids grow up and and uh, exceed like they have. Yeah, at least you got the the benefit of not having to bail either one of us out of jail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, we uh, you two were wonderful kids. Uh, didn't give us hardly any trouble, if any. You started working from the time you turned sixteen. Uh, we bought you your first first vehicle you took care of them after that and uh, you just became very very responsible kids i think that kind of like you guys making sure that because tiff and i were trying to figure out this because you know you, you guys bought our first car but made us responsible for things for it i think that taught us a lot real early on because when I mean, you guys would still help us out like i know you give me some money every now and then to get out of the house but you know car insurance was on us yeah. gas was on us uh, the repairs uh, mm-hmm. i took care of the fixing them but uh I always held you guys responsible for buying the parts and what it, whatever it took, but uh, I took care of the manual part of it. Yeah, and that helped out a ton because I know a lot of times that stuff can get real expensive. But I think, it, yeah, it just kind of taught us some responsibility at a young age, which kind of helped us when we got older. Helped you guys get your first jobs, and uh, that was a fortunate part of me working for Pepsi, being out on a route and delivering soda. I got to know a lot of people, and uh, um they uh, seen what kind of a worker I was, so they, they knew they could probably trust my kids and uh, didn't hesitate on, on hiring you both. Yeah, because Michelle got Subway, and she worked there for all, all the way through, through college. college. I had Save a Lot, which was a grocery store, which I worked for two years, but then the boss I had there moved into a restaurant, and I followed him over there, and that was up through college. Yeah. So, yeah, there wasn't no slacking on your two's part. You, uh, you made a living and helped pay your way through college, and... Uh, I'm very, very proud of both of you. Yeah, I think we both turned out pretty well. Yep. Got uh, you each got a little grand, or brought a grandson for us and your mom into the world, and uh, um, just couldn't be happier right now. Life, life is really, really good. So, of like uh, the best day that you can think of of your life, do you do you have a day that you would probably say would be the one you would go to as your best day? Um, I guess the best day was the day that you was born, my son, and. Uh, and then there's the next day would be when Michelle was born, and there's two more days after that. <laughs> you know, uh, each of the grandsons were born. Uh, were always always good day, but probably the best day was uh, when you were born, my son, and uh, got to see you for the first time. How was that in the? Because uh, you were in the hospital. Because that was kind of the were you one of the first like generations that actually were in the delivery room. I think so. Yeah, because um, we had to take classes for that and to get all prepared. But yeah. It, there wasn't too much before that, I don't think. His grandpa was never in any of the deliveries for no, any of you guys? No, nope, not at all. Matter of fact, he was on the road for, uh, I think he just got back in off the road for a couple of us, so he was a truck driver. And, but, yeah, he didn't get to sit in and, and watch any of it. The doctor would just come out and say, Mr. Henniger, you have another boy. <laughs> Pop the scars and yeah. let's see. So I know uh, one of the... the I feel bad about it, but the day that um, Michelle had her kid, um, the week before was her baby shower. Right. And so we were we didn't want to uh, let you guys know that we were pregnant. Tiffany was pregnant until after baby, Michelle's baby shower, because it's like you know it's kind of her day. So the next weekend was Memorial Day, and so we're like, okay, well we're going down for that. 
you know, we'll, we'll tell Michelle, we'll tell mom and dad. And then right as we're packing stuff up, because we, we had a present for Michelle that we're going to have her open. Um, that basically was telling her that we were pregnant. And then we we're going to put balloons in our car to let you guys know that we we're pregnant. And of course, as we're getting ready to leave the house, I get a phone call from you. Hey, your sister's water broke and uh, she's going in labor. So I was like, oh, crap. Because you were going on a hunting trip that weekend, like five days after that. Right, right. So like, well, we really want to tell you before you leave. And so we end up just deciding to tell you. And uh, I think it's kind of cool on that day. It's like, so you got a grand, a brand new grandbaby. And then you get the information that, hey, in about eight months, you're going to have another one. Yeah. Um, it's another great day in, the, in our lives. And uh, I can honestly say it brought tears to my eyes. So <laughs> um, very, very, very good day. So let's see. So... Like at Pepsi, you've worked there for, like you said, 37 years. You started out on the line actually making soda. Uh, actually I actually started out loading trucks. Oh, okay. And then uh, I, would, I did that. I actually got laid off for about six months. The only layoff they ever have ever had. Then got hired back that spring and uh, been going strong since. But started out loading trucks, and then I went into uh, the can line where they make the soda and put it in the cans. Um, did that for a couple of years, and... Then I actually went into making a soda where you mix the water and the syrup and send it over to the lines to be uh, put into containers. And then uh, from there, I went into testing the soda after it was made and pulling samples off the line and being tested. And Were you testing them when you were canning them too? Yep. <laughs> yep. Always had to do a taste test too. And, uh, that was some of the best soda I've ever had was coming directly off the line and being filled because it was running... 34, 35 degrees, 36 degrees. It nice. was nice and cool. And um, Back then, they still had glass bottles, which even made it better. But then I went out onto uh, a, a truck selling. I did that for about 15 years. And then I came in and, and been part of management for about the last 10 years. So good career, good life, and uh, has, has made me a good living. And you still got to do a little bit of the, the mechanical stuff on the side. I remember you yep. doing that for forever, really. Yep. Uh, I've always... Uh, I don't know, glutton for punishment or <laughs> just wanting spending money, but I've always had two or three jobs. And, um, did a lot of mechanicing on the side. Worked for a very guy, very very nice guy by the name of Rick Ingles in his shop in the diesel mechanic shop, and uh, worked for him for a lot a lot of years. And uh, probably one of the best bosses I've ever had. But he treated you fair, and uh, and he respected you, and he, and he rewarded you well. But uh, but uh, that was that was probably one of my favorite jobs there, working for him. You did that, what, a couple days a week or just weekends? Or? Um, usually on, every night after I got all done with my route, I'd be done with my route about 2 o'clock and uh, go work for him till five thirty, six o'clock, sometimes 7 o'clock. But, uh, yep, it was, a, it was a good job. Gained, and, gained a lot of experience in mechanics, and uh, which is something I really enjoyed to do. And you actually had your own little shop for a bit, didn't you? Yep, That's for true. a couple of years in Liberty, I had my own shop there in the afternoons and evenings and weekends working on lawnmowers and chainsaws and weed eaters and all the small engine stuff, which I really enjoy working on yet today. Did you, I know, I remember that a little bit because it was, I can't remember what the guy's name was that had the, the shop on his property and it you kind of. Uh, Elmer Sherman. Yeah. So did you, so was it kind of a full-fledged business or was it kind of like what you do now just with more of a storefront kind of setup? Um, it was a, uh, just people bringing it in as you was there. I mean, you had your regular customers, and uh, you gained some new ones all the time. But uh, they knew the hours that I was there. I actually did some advertising for that business, and so they knew the hours. And uh, on Saturdays, I was up there almost all day, so um, they knew they could come in on weekends and drop stuff off and pick it up in the evenings through the week or whatever it took. Did you end up just stopping that just because you were easier to do at the house? or? Um, I ended up stopping it because I ended up getting a, a bigger route through Pepsi on a truck, and I just I just didn't have the time for it anymore, mm -hmm. and it just took up too much time. Yeah, I remember going up there every now and then, cause it was just kind of a shed kind of set up, yeah. and you're able to go in and kind of do some work. And then once we uh, moved out to where we are now, got a nice garage, and uh, I still continued working on stuff for the, some, some of the same uh, uh, customers that I had before, and uh, kind of grew that business, and now at the age that I'm at, and with the grandkids being around, I start scaling that back and uh, spend more time with the family and enjoy life. It's been a blast getting to see you guys with the two kids because it's it's one of those things that I know you. Even when we, I first moved up to Columbia, you guys were always super excited to be grandparents. I know it took a little bit longer than you guys are probably hoping, but uh, 
now that we got them both here, it's pretty fun. Yeah, it is fun. Um, I just I really, really enjoy it and uh, watching them two little guys, especially when they're together, interact and have fun and just enjoy enjoying each other. And I just can't wait till they get older and we get to take take them fishing and maybe even on a hunting trip or a camping trip. And your mom and I both said when we retire, we want to load them both up in the vehicle and take them to the to the mountains in Colorado and Montana and, and just visit some different sites throughout the United States. I think you talked about that. I think that's going to be a really cool like experience for them to get with you guys because it's just a week with Grandma and Grandpa or however long it's yeah. going to be, seeing some of the sites, you know, Grand Canyon or just mountains and, you know, all that kind of yeah. road trip fun stuff. Your mom and I, neither one of them seen Mount Rushmore. That's probably one of the first places we want to take them, and uh, can't wait for that to happen. Mm. That'd be pretty cool. I know it's something that you mentioned. I'm really excited for them to get to have that kind of experience with you guys. That's what I like, too, is, I mean, you you and Mom had Michelle and I pretty young. I mean, I think you were 20, 21 when I was born? Yeah. Or maybe 22, because Mom was 20. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it was another year, and you had Michelle. So even though we didn't have our kids till we're right at 28, 29, 30, I mean, you guys are still fairly young. So getting to be around for a long, long time with these guys is going to be yeah. pretty awesome. It is, yeah. Hopefully be around long enough to uh, watch them get through school and graduate and, and uh, start their family. So what's the, the thing that you're looking, I guess, would it be the trip that you're looking most forward to with the grandkids, or is there oh, something? Yeah. yeah, I just can't wait to uh, get them strapped in the truck seat and hit the road. What uh, I know, I was trying to remember, there was a time that you took me squirrel hunting out of Grandma and Grandpa's. I think it was Grandma and Grandpa's. And uh, I was walking ahead of you, and you had just a little twenty two, and there was a, I don't know if it was what kind of tree it was, but you are picking off the bulbs, and they kept, like, exploding and popping down on me. Probably hickory nuts. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't know if you were excited, like, some of those hunting trips like that, just to yeah. take them for a squirrel hunt and stuff like that. Yep, exactly. Um, I still remember taking you out to Colorado doing some uh, mule deer hunting and um, riding the four-wheelers around, and uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to spend that time with you, and, and uh, very enjoyable. Yeah, I think I was in eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade. I got to go two years in a row. Yeah. That was a lot of fun getting to just go out there and see, like, the mountains, which I hadn't seen yet, and... Um, to this day, I still think that's one place I'd love to live is Colorado just because of how beautiful it is yeah. and how rustic it is. Then getting to see you interact with all the older folks and having fun with them and giving them a hard time. <laughs> and, and they enjoyed it too. And say, I think I was the only, because I think the year after that was your last year or maybe. Yeah, we didn't go too many more, if any, after you, the last year that you went. The group just kind of fell apart and didn't go anymore. Well, you got to go a couple more times with a different group yep. since then? Yep. yep couple times with uh, a guy that had some mules and uh, got to do an elk hunt, a couple elk hunts out in Colorado and was successful and uh, um, we had a good time and uh, as always good trips. You think that's something if the boys get older you want to try and do an elk hunt like that or? I would like to yeah um, if I keep myself in shape enough to do it. Uh, walking the mountains is pretty rough. Just get you one of those gator like four wheelers and the boys can walk next to you yeah, while you ride yeah. it. Yeah, or get me a cart and they can pull me, I guess. <laughs> get you an off-road scooter. Yeah. I can just remember having my Brittany bird dogs, um, raising the pups, how you and Michelle always enjoyed that and have fun carrying them little pups around. And uh, um, I, I can still see you guys rolling around in the yard and them puppies jumping on you. Yeah, that was that was enjoyable. Because we had, what, a good two or three litters? Yeah. From uh, Missy and Duke was yeah. the two dogs I remember first us having. Yeah. Um, Turned out to be some good dogs, and kind of sad to see the puppies go, but we couldn't keep them all, so. You'd definitely have a house full if you did. Yeah. Because she usually had, what, like six? Six or seven. And have you ever been able to follow her line at all, or his line, to see? No, I never have. Um, never did do that. I know with our big dog, I'm trying to see if I can get him bred at some point and kind of follow his lineage. Yeah. Some. be kind of neat. Seems like that's probably a lot of work, though, and you have to really keep up on it. Right, yeah, you got to be able to follow the, the puppies and know where they're at, and. That's one of the reasons Tiff doesn't want to breed him is because she's scared she's going to have to, like, watch <laughs> all of his and then watch all the ones they have and yeah. keep an eye on all of them. So what's, uh, what's a, a story from high school or, or something like that that you've never told me? Well, I don't know. There's wasn't, uh, wasn't a very honored kid or just kind of pretty much towed the line because uh, my dad was pretty strict. and um, Probably one of the funniest things we did, we had a turkey running around out, out in the front, front driveway of the school a bunch of us kind of herded him up and got him inside the school <laughs> so 
Well, it was funny watching the principal trying to get him back out. <laughs> that was probably one of the most enjoyable things we did. But did you guys get in trouble for it? No, they didn't really know who did it. <laughs> so we just everybody was kind of sitting back and laughing about it. It was kind of fun. We had a pretty good principal. And other than that, just going going through school and uh, uh, did cro- did uh, track when I was in school it was the only sport that I did. And, uh, other than that, if I had a chance to work, I was working and. Uh, Hunting, I was hunting and fishing, so uh, that was pretty much my life going through high school. Yeah, because the school you and mom went to was the same one Michelle and I graduated from. Correct. And uh, I guess I guess all your brothers did too. All of my uncles graduated from there. Yeah. Um, Grandpa and Grandma, they they didn't get through high school, did they? No, I don't no, think so. Neither one of them did. Of course, Grandpa, that's bad. Grandpa started working at a very young age, and uh, I think he left home when he was seventeen or eighteen, driving a truck. So. He told me a story the when he was eight, I think great grandpa was sick with something. I can't remember what he said it was, but he ended up having to like team up the mules and try to, you know, basically farm as an eight year old with these horses. Yeah. Yeah, he had a pretty rough life. Uh of course being the oldest of thirteen in his family and I think the next three or four were girls, so the girls wasn't gonna be out there farming uh, other than collecting eggs and stuff. But yeah, grandpa had a lot of expectations for my dad and uh, learned how to team up the mules and run the mules, and uh, he had a pretty tough life. I think he was pretty ornery, though, once he got out of the house and everything, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he kept you in line, because he knew. I think so, yeah. <laughs> he was he was a jokester. He liked telling jokes. And still does today. I had a, a training, and I actually the lady there was trying to figure out who the jokester of the group was and all the guys that were there from where I worked said I was, even though I'm not really a big jokester. And so I told her I had to call Grandpa to get some jokes. And so he told me a couple that I used the next day and everybody got a kick out of them. Yeah, he's uh, he can always tell you a joke. All you do is ask him. <laughs> Most of the time you don't even have to ask <laughs> when he's telling you one. So. What I find interesting is like, um, I don't think Michelle or I were very honored either when we were in high school. But you weren't very, like, you and Mom weren't strict on us at all. Like, kind of let us know what was expected. and Yep, we just kind of set the boundaries, and you guys knew what they were. And uh, and we done that at a young age, too. So I can't remember ever uh, even have to spank you, you two, but maybe a couple times. And, um, all I had to do is raise my voice, and you guys knew I meant it. And uh, like I say, you were very, very respectful kids and couldn't be prouder. I think you and Mom did a heck of a job raising us. Yeah, I think we did. Uh, you're, you're both successful, and your mom probably played a bigger part in it than I did because she was around you more because I was usually working. But, uh, yeah, very, very proud. Well, like I said, this is going to be coming out uh, next Father's Day, and I was kind of wanting to just chit-chat with you yeah. a little bit. I know, like, with uh, with Grandpa and stuff, like, people always talk about um, – you know, whenever somebody's gone, you remember everything about them, but the voice is the first thing that leaves. Right. And, uh, I know we've got some more videos and things like that, but um, just like I even like to try to do more often, just sit down and chit chat about things because there's times we talk about some stories when you were younger and stuff like that that you, know, you just like to have somewhere to listen to again. Or, you know, Jacoby says, Grandpa really, you know, isn't very honorary, is he? You can be like, well, listen to this. <laughs> He's got a story about a turkey. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh... I'm sure as they get older, they'll find out how, kind of how Andre I am because I kind of lead them down that path a little bit. But uh, looking forward to it. Well, uh, again, I just want to, you know, again, you and Mom did a great job raising us. Um, we probably don't say it enough. I know a lot of times we talk as much as we can, but probably don't talk enough. But I'll let you know that, you know, I think you did a great job as a dad. I couldn't ask for a better dad. Um, teach me how to play baseball, be in there for games. You know, I'm like you said, you coached us from – what kindergarten or younger all the way through right up to high yeah, school yeah, to high school yeah i can only ima- i've there's a ballpark up here i can only imagine how frustrating it is for you guys to be out there with four and five year olds trying to get them to not kick the dirt or yeah. pick their noses that was actually probably the funner times of it was uh you you get tickled out there watching you guys <laughs> out there kicking the dirt and playing instead of watching where the ball was going and because as you got older the 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 expectations of the parents got bigger and bigger and mm. uh, kind of took the fun out of it. So the younger years were actually funner. Kind of just let the kids be kids and let them run around. And exactly, yeah. 
Yeah, I think I was trying to think of it. The I think you were one of the first coaches to actually go out with a ball glove too, because the league we played in, when you're younger, the coaches pitch. Right. And I know a lot of the coaches would just go out there without a ball glove. And I think a couple of them probably got caught pretty square with a ball up the middle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to be part of the team and uh, be active with you kids and uh, hit the ball, see, and uh, do the best that I could because I, actually I never played baseball, but I just wanted to be a part of it. And, and uh, with you kids growing up and playing baseball, I wanted to be there for you. Yeah, it was kind of nice because with your work, like you had to get up super early, but you were able to get off round two or three at times, so you are able to get there right after school got out and get with us and get working with us and a couple of the other dads would try to come in when they could. Yeah, yeah, it worked out well that way. Well, you have any other cool or interesting stories you want to yeah, share at the moment? I don't think so right at the moment. Uh, I have to thank some so we can sit down and do this again. Yeah. Well, again, we wish you happy Father's Day early. We're doing this a week early, but uh, let you know thanks for doing it and love you. And, yeah. again, best dad I could yeah. ask for, so hope to be half the dad you are. And Jacoby will be in pretty well, good shape. You're already on a good start, and uh, appreciate everything you do and love you too. For the kids, I th- I thought it was gonna be. I thought that that was gonna be kind of a, not really a. I wasn't sure how well structured that was gonna be because I mean I'm sitting down with three kids trying to record audio, and so I thought it was gonna be a bunch of them. Like they were gonna be like talking over each other a bunch, and it was gonna be like, you know, three people screaming for attention. Yeah, and so you did all these at the same time, all three of them at the same time. Yes, I did all three nice. of them. I just I took, I just took my microphone and set it in the middle of the table and had everybody <laughs> sitting around and we all just like sat and talked. We did it all like Father's Day centric, like, OK, like it's <laughs> Father's Day. So what, um, you know, how like I, I guess I basically kind of turned it into a status report for how I'm doing as a father. <laughs> All right, kids, this is my, wait, how old's the oldest? 17? All right, it's my 17-year annual review. <laughs> yeah. How am I doing? <laughs> what do you mean I'm a B player? <laughs> I'm A material. Oh. Yeah, and like the preview, my, like, again, I can't talk to my kid yet, but I'm excited for him to get to that age where I can. But, you know, this being my first year with him, he's starting to walk and stuff. And, uh, you know, just, I think, I think there's probably a little bit of exhaustion in my voice in my video <laughs> or my audio. Cause I think I'm pretty sure either we're right before we went to the hospital, or right when we came back. Um, but there's just kind of like a whole excitement for a year coming up. So um, I'm excited to listen back to, like I said, I haven't edited it yet. So at this point I don't know what it's like, but um, definitely was a, or definitely up to this point has been exciting. And I know I kind of lean on you for a lot of little advice on how to be a dad. So, uh, so far this first year has been pretty sweet. Like now I have a, my my son is 12 now so it seems like with boys they start difficult because they run around and want to break all your things but they get easier that's what i've always heard girls girls i feel get harder as time goes on like it starts out nice and sweet and then they get older and then they want things and then and then they meet boys okay so it's father's day well it's not father's day today but it will be, and I talked with my father, I should also probably spend a little bit of time with my three kids. So I'll introduce each of you, and then, I don't know, you can say something, and then we'll just kind of chit-chat. Okay. okay, so we'll start with my oldest. Her name is Kylie. She's 17. She's getting ready to start her senior year of high school. Icebreaker here. <laughs> yeah. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Kylie. Oh, I see. <laughs> nice. Steal my line. All right. <laughs> my second oldest keeps my namesake. His name is Richard. He's the only boy out of the three. Richard, what would you like to say? What's up, everybody? Right? I'm little Richard. What's up with the clapping? <laughs> I don't know. It just feels natural. <gasps> Okay. We just can't get that energy like you do. You're like, what's up, everybody? I'm Richard. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. And then my youngest, the the baby of the family, and she loves the title of being the baby of the family. My youngest. Oh, Richard's also 12. 12, right? Yeah. yeah. See, I nailed it. I was 13. Nailed my age right this time. And then I have my youngest, who's eight. No. I'm nine. No, I know you're not. I'm nine. I was just messing with you. 
My youngest, who's nine, her name is Chloe. Chloe, what would you like to say? I'm almost ten. You are almost ten. You're going to be ten. And two, technically two months. Well. Look at your feet. All right. Since, it's fa since this is for Father's Day, I would like you all to sit. And I'll sit back and you can all sing your praises of me. <laughs> There's just so many. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Smart asses. Yes. <laughs> All right. Do you have like a topic here? <laughs> Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> no, I'm saying let's start with what are things that you like about me as a father, and then we'll do that, and then we'll and then we'll say what you don't like about me as a father. So I'll go ahead and put mm -hmm. that in your head now, so that way you can think. So, Kylie, pro con. Let's uh -huh. let's see how I'm doing here. So what's a good thing? And then we'll move on. I guess the good thing is that you're not like normal fathers. Like you like to like play Pathfinder with us. And oh. Stuff. Like because I sit and play role playing games with you guys. Yeah. So I'm a nerdy father. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you're just a pro. So I'm unconventional. That's what I would think as a teenager that would uh you would find that embarrassing. Like oh my god, my dad is so weird. It had his moments. Not really. I mean, like, you introduced me to a lot of stuff that I like uh -huh. right now. Like, uh, the small cast stuff and, like, video games. All right, all right. All right, Richard. It's one thing you like about me as a father. You're that crazy. I'm You're insane. Cr I'm insane? Yes. You have to be more specific. Because, <laughs> like, you do, like, random things at random times. Like, sometimes, like, one minute, like, you're just having a casual conversation Next minute, you're just having a long speech. Yeah? Yeah. But yeah, you've introduced a lot of things to all of us. Oh, and you like that? I love it. Okay. Chloe, what's one thing you like? Is that, like, you're not always super serious about no, stuff. Not always super you're serious. You're always, like, you're always, like, upbeat and happy and not, not like, serious about a bunch, like, about a lot of stuff. Like, you are serious at times, mm -hmm. but, like, most of the time, then, like, you're all chill. Oh, I'm all chill. Yeah. Ooh, chill, Dad. <laughs> I wouldn't think you'd like that because you're a very serious child. You're very like you're a very organized child, so I wouldn't think you'd like that. But you do. If anyone could organized, right now they would know I'm not organized. Oh well, your bed right now your bed's perfectly made because you made it this morning and yeah, it stayed it's perfectly it's made. I didn't mess it up. <laughs> oh, I came lie. along, just ruined your world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So we've so we've done the good things. Now let's move on to the bad. And it's okay. I take it. I'm a big. I'm a big boy. I can take criticism. So so let's start. Let's start with. Let's go around again. Kylie, do I have do I have moments where you're like, oh, I hate that old man. There's just so many moments. <laughs> Mostly just like when you like tease me or mo mostly now it gets just of the whole boyfriend thing. Oh. I you mean, don't like it when I mention the boyfriend. Or yeah, like, and his name is Because you always want to know, know like stuff that they're doing and like, like you always want to know like secrets about them. Oh, I wouldn't say he's nosy. I'd say he's just like active because oh. I'm the older one and he knows. And he knows what he was like when boys he was are, a kid. Boys are, boys are gross. You're a boy, Dad. I know, so exactly. <laughs> That's my point. He anybody knows should what know happens. the boys are gross. It should be me. <laughs> All right, Richard. Something you don't like? Well, there's just so few, but yet oh. so many. Oh, I, th that makes no sense. Honestly, I kind of Are there times hate... where, like, I'm super mean? Where you feel like I'm super no, mean? No, I just kind of hate when, like, I feel like you're being unfair and, like, you put your foot down about something. Uh -huh. And, like, I don't want you to, I don't want to do that. And, like, I want to do something else, but mm -hmm. you make me, like, not do it or yeah. do it. And I just... You don't like it when I tell you no. Yes. Oh. Exactly. Well, to be fair, sometimes you can be a little stubborn. Chloe, <laughs> something you don't like. Sometimes you get super mad at me. Yeah. Like, I'll say something, or do something, and you'll get super mad. You'll look at, you'll give me that look like, mm, <laughs> but you always lay on my bed and you miss on my pillow. Oh my gosh, that's the worst. That's the worst you got? Yeah. First Dude, I hate when you do that because you like scrunch up my pillow and then like pull, like mess up my blanket that I had to 
suck it back in and it gets really, really annoying. What do you think, what do you think are qualities that make a father? Like, I guess I'm asking like, what, um, like how, like, I guess how do I compare to other, to other dads that you know? Cause like y'all, you guys all have friends and those friends have dads and I'm sure you guys talk, they're like, oh, my dad said blah, blah, blah. Or my dad did blah, blah, blah. My dad took me to blah, blah, blah. Actually, Your dad has long hair, a beard, listens to heavy metal, plays video games. I said I don't really care about that stuff. Does, it does podcasts. It does podcasts. Honestly, most of uh, the dads that I've seen, you blow them out of the water, Dan. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When it comes to, like, like meeting other dads, like, mm. you are very different from other dads. But a lot of people say when, like, they meet you, like, if my friends meet you, they always say that they really like you. And sometimes I'm just kind of like, why? Because he gets on my nerves. <laughs> Is that what you think? I think it's, I think she just under, I think only she understands that because she lives with you. They, uh, they wouldn't understand that because they would, like, meet you for the first time. Right. That makes sense. I've been living longer. My, fr my <laughs> friend Josh thinks you're super chill. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I, I was just thinking in my mind. Sometimes. If, if he lived with, if he if you lived with him, you would understand. Yeah. You would understand why. Would you guys be okay? And like, do you guys feel at all embarrassed when you introduce me to your friends? No. If I'm wearing like, you know, my ripped jeans and a Doctor Who t-shirt. Oh, heck. Oh. I, feel, I feel like all my friends are. Who what about the last time we were going to see your boyfriends? Oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I did. I made. I made him meet me. And yeah. you were like, we all sat down to dinner. We all sat down and had a dinner together, and he seemed yeah. really, really nervous. That was ticked off because he didn't do uh, anything. Have you okay? Have you met your boyfriend's parents? Like yeah. both of them? So, th so I, f so that's a normal thing. Oh, like you feel like, like you didn't feel like I was being weird or overstepping my bounds or whatever. No, really, because I feel. I mean, like actually, no one's the first boyfriend that you've actually met. Uh huh. But, or well, you did meet him. But that we didn't like sit down to dinner or anything. It was kind of like a quick thing. But you actually met Noah. Uh, yeah, I did meet Noah's parents, and they they were like really different from mm -hmm. you and Mom. Oh, I know. I was gonna ask. Okay, uh, if you're with your friends, because I because I feel like you're obviously you're gonna be more honest with your friends than you are with me. I get that. That makes perfect sense. So if you are friends ask you about me like what's your dad like what 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 is the first thing you tell them chloe what do you say like if your friends are like what's your dad like he's not what you think he is yeah yeah that's what you say <laughs> Ooh, you make me sound because, mysterious because like you're you're like like you're way different than other like i've met like like my friend natalia i met her dad and her dad was like always really serious and didn't really talk to us. But you're like way different than that because like you always like talk to us and you're and like you're you're chill and not so serious all the time. So what about you, Richard? If your friends are like, "What's your dad like?" Oh, uh, I mostly start talking about your beard and hair. That's what you go with, beard and hair. It's yeah. like the first thing people notice about you. Really? Yeah. Is my hair and my... Well, I mean, I get, like, that's the first, like, physical feature you probably No, like, notice. that's, like, the... Because, like, like, most of the dads I've seen, like, they got, like, shortcut hair and, like, uh -huh. they, they got, like, poofed up. They're wearing a uh -huh. polo shirt. Like, this. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, like, um... They're wearing a polo shirt? Is <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Said? yeah. Or sometimes they're, like, this. But, like, you, like, have, like curved back and like you got that beard but like most of the dads I've seen like are like completely shaved and what their face is just that and like, their I face don't really see a whole lot of people with beards honestly like it's just the beard especially right now man it's summer it's gonna be hot it's just the beard it brings it all together it makes my face cry <laughs> face sweat cry <laughs> That's what happens. So your dad, your beard has so has its own emotion. Maybe so it does. So when it's sweating, it means it's alive. It's alive. It's so sentient. wait, are you saying you didn't like it when he didn't have a beard? Because he like. I was gonna really say this thing isn't old. I only grew it like. Well, I have four to say year, four or five years ago. Well, I have to say I kind of like it a little bit more with the beard. Because like, I would not recognize you if you didn't have your beard. Yeah, like, what I, about the tattoos? Does that? 
Is that like I'm fine with tattoos. Well, no, I guess like does that does that make me unlike other dads? Yes. Uh, I don't think I've actually met a dad that has tattoos or like I've met a lot of. How you know? Have, have you have you seen them? No, I've met a lot of moms that have tattoos, but they're like really like yeah. I mean, they just tell me that they have tattoos. They don't show me because sometimes they're like. You had to bring that up in this conversation. Don't look. I was afraid about this happening. Ah, uh, I'm sure most dads don't have nipple piercing. Oh, I hate, I hate, like, I just hate looking at them because, like, it makes me feel like you know, something's like right walk here. The house without a shirt most of the time. <laughs> yeah, especially in the summer. But like, when I look at them, like, it makes me feel like something be changed. I get gauges. I those. hate I hate when people get their ears pierced or like have gauges because that looks so painful. It's like a big hole in your freaking ear. Yeah. And it looks so disgusting and painful. I've actually told a lot of friends that you have nipple piercings. So they're just like, oh god, why? <laughs> I actually told a lot of people that. And they're, they're just like, ugh. And I'm like, yeah, he like passed out. Is that the first okay. thing that comes to I mind? No, I didn't pass out. I almost passed out. <laughs> it was close. Oh, like, okay. it was super close. Like, I felt I was going to, but I managed to pull it back. Oh. You want to ask mom that? Uh, no, she wasn't she, there. Yeah, she I was by myself. Um, but no, they, it wasn't the, it wasn't the needle. It was, uh, when they went to put the ring in, mm. they had to, like, twist it to get it to <laughs> snap in, to get oh. the ring to snap in. Okay, Dad, we've already okay. had dinner. And that's when, like, I started seeing white at the at the. I started seeing white, and I knew I was gonna pass out. So I hurried up and drank some water and got some sugar in my system. Okay, and that helps bring you back. Okay, we've already heard. We already we already ate dinner. Okay? okay, okay. So now, last thing. Do you have one dad story that's your favorite dad story? <laughs> Let's start with okay, Richard. I feel like you want to you want to get yours out first. Okay, I remember. One time. Wait, no, you guys go first. I gotta remember these. Oh, yeah. wait, I got, I got one. You got yours, right? Yeah. Okay. So spaced out. Okay. Hey, go ahead, Chloe. So, Chloe. I was the girls on the move, okay? <laughs> girls, Dad, yeah. Dad wanted to see how fast no, wait, I Hang on, hang on. So, girls on the move yeah. was, like an, was like a thing, like an after school thing that, yeah. you would, that you did. And so, I would pick you up from that every day. Yeah. So, one day, we were in the yard, and Dad wanted to see how fast I could run. Uh-huh. Dad, you know what the story is, Dad. Oh, you, uh, oh, we did a race? Yeah, and then Dad started running. I was like, have shoes on. I didn't have shoes on, that's true. And I didn't have shoes on and my pants came down a little bit. No, and then... <laughs> my pants came down a little bit. So, my, like, you're my, like, halfway down the yard and then your pants are falling down. I'm like, Dad, <laughs> My pants were falling down and my butt was hanging out. <laughs> That's your that's your favorite story. Yeah. The story where I was almost without pants in the front yard. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I feel like. Do you I'm, have Do you have yours yet? I, I'm trying to find out the best. Oh okay. I don't know. I feel like I have two good ones. Oh, you're well. Go ahead and say both. It's fine. Uh, the first one was when I was I don't know how old I was. I was in Girl Scouts. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. And, uh, it was kind of, it was this party that I went to, it was kind of like a end of the year thing or something. We were like celebrating the anniversary of the Girl Scouts, and we were all in this room and, uh, there was a DJ up and we were playing music and dancing, and then Dad comes to pick me up, and when he comes to pick me up, they play this song, uh, it's called Opposites and Track by Opposites Paul. Opposites and Track by Paul Abdul. And he was just like, Oh my god, I know this song. And he just starts like dancing, like busting moves, and everyone's looking at me and looking at him. And I'm just like, oh my god, dad. I think that was the first time you were ever embarrassed by me. I think that's the first time in your in your child life that you were like, oh my god, what is that man doing? I think I was like 14, and that's when I was kind of like, oh, my dad was kind of lame. <laughs> and all my friends were there. You said you had another one. What's the other one? Uh, the other one was when we were all in the house, and Richard was across the street over at Peyton's house, his friend. Uh huh. And so 
We didn't even know what he was doing. We never usually know what he's doing. He usually just like plays video games over there. Right. So we find out that one day he decides to climb up on a porch and jump off. Hey, that's my story. Repeatedly. <laughs> uh, and the house is on a hill. And so finally Hayden comes over and says that Richard like can't get up or like he's hurt. So then mom and dad rush over across the street to go see what's going on. And then dad's just like, oh, you're fine. Just walk it off. Yeah. <laughs> and then Richard's like, I really can't. I did mention this story on an earlier <laughs> podcast. Yes. I told him to, I told him, and then it turns out that his leg was actually broken. Three places, yeah. I think. Oh, just two. Uh, two. I'm the only person in the family who hasn't broke a bone or sprained anything. I'm the only person who's broken a bone or sprained something. Like, I kind of, I wouldn't say I, I sprained it. I like kind of. Well, like, she broke. A, well, she up sprained. Because me and Richard were wrestling and pushed my hand down, and it like. Hurt it it seems all the human injuries to come from me. I feel like yeah. I've had a lot of injuries. Maybe in this you guys, maybe you guys, bust your head maybe open. Maybe you guys should stop fighting. Break your arms. That'd be great. I, mm. I feel like Dad's had a lot of injuries in his childhood. I had to wear that stupid splint. Something crazy. Stunk. All right, Richard. Okay, I remember... I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm ready. I am ready for your story. I remember this time where we were all... It was like... I think it was like summertime or Christmas break. Uh-huh. And um, we lived in the house in Monroe. And you decided it would be fun like if like we started running around the house... like. Uh-huh. And you were, like, trying to chase us like a crazy person. Uh-huh. And then, like, about, like, two hours of this, I ended up being locked in the bathroom. How'd you get locked in the bathroom? I locked myself in. Because oh. I was worried. You locked that, yourself in? Uh, yeah. And you couldn't get out? No, I could get out. And, like, you know, I was just, like, waiting. Like, I was, like, making sure, like, like you're gone before... I'm like, I stayed in there for a while. Were we all in that house? Because I don't remember that. Oh, I'm not sure about you. I'm there. pretty sure, like, you were, like, somewhere else with your... I think you were, like, at a sleepover with your friends. Yeah, like, I stayed there for, like, about two hours. And, like, you start... You know, like, I unlocked the door. And, like, Dad was like, where were you? And I was like, what are you talking about? I was hiding. And he's like, oh, well, we kind of gave up the game. <laughs> And like we forgot about him. Yeah, <laughs> he locks himself in the bathroom, and then we stop playing. And then I was like, and I was like, where were you? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he and he was like, I was looking for you for a while, and I and I was like, I was hiding because we were playing the game. He's like, well, we gotta give that up. And like after that, I just kind of I just gave him his face, and then like. I just walked to the pantry, grabbed some crackers, and sat on the couch and watched TV. The Russia was a sad Zach who thought the game was still okay. going. Last question, because I don't, because uh, I don't know this. Honestly, this whole thing kind of feels a little weird because you guys, because it's like Father's Day, and I'm like, praise me. <laughs> I am so, God today. Is it really Father's Day? I thought it was June 18th. No, like. This is coming out on Father's Day. Like when it's all everything. It'll be out later. Okay, so I guess the thing. So I guess I'm. I'm I'll ask this question. I'm not saying that I'll do it, but you know, what is there something that you feel like I can do to be a better father? I don't think there's anything. I think there's one thing. What's oh. That? You should say yes more. Oh, I should say yes more? Yes, and like, you know, like, trust me, like, you know, like, because oh, I'm older, and like, you know, true. I know about things. You are, yeah. I know how the world's working. Yeah? Yeah. That's what you think? Yes. Hmm. Okay. I think every single adult that listens to this right now is going, yeah, totally. You totally know how the world works. No, I mean, like, I know what's right and wrong, like, I know... Know about all that stuff. Well, then, I, then I guess I did my job. I don't. I don't think I know how the world works. Let's <laughs> scratch that. All right. What about, what about what about you, Chloe? Is there anything I can do to be a better dad? Not shave your beard. Not shave my beard. Yeah. I I don't think that's I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I don't know. Yeah, mom's but, forcing him to not if shave, shave it. Shave beard. I will. I will move out and live <laughs> in Mexico. And live in Mexico. And live in Mexico. Why Mexico? By yourself. It's drastic. I'll go. I'll go all the way to. I'll go all the way to Grandpa Pyro's house 
And live the Instagram player if you save your beard. Oh, okay. You just live in Mexico. Right? Don't worry. If, Close. As long as, as long as mom's around, that's not going to happen. Okay. Because dad's like, mom was like, man, you're going, you're going to peach hoods. And like, uh, and dad's like, yeah, and soon I'm going to teach him to shave. And he's like, yeah, but you're not shaving your beard. I thought you were going to say, don't lay on my bed. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going to say. Anyway. Okay, guys. Is there anything you guys want to say before? Please check us out on the Pog Bros Network. <laughs> we love you, Father. Aww. What about you, Polly? Anything you want to say? You got nothing? You put her on the spot, Dad. <laughs> that's okay. You don't have to. Your eyes say it all. <laughs> Can I just say, honey, no, why did you lick my meat this whole entire time? Wow. Talking to the dog. All right, so recording. So something I wanted to do for a little bit is um, kind of uh, whenever before I kick off a show with Rich, if I'm waiting a little bit, you know, something to be a little bit more productive. And what I would like to do is kind of discuss kind of my current state as being a brand new dad. And a lot of this is, is for you, you know, Jacoby, once you get to an age where you know, at some point in this world, and hopefully you get to see these, hopefully they don't, I don't just do these and they go away, but at some point in this world, you know, I, I'll, I'll be gone, you know, my, you, my grandkids, you know, if we have grandkids at that point, um, they, you know, I always kind of wonder what my grandpa's thought in his life and what my dad's thought in his life and just kind of document like, you know, as you've been here, you know, you'll be three weeks tomorrow. Um, I wrote down quite a bit of stuff that's happened at the hospital and all that kind of stuff. So the big thing, um, you know, like these first three weeks have been really amazing. Your mom has just been tremendous. Uh, you know, she's taken this whole mother thing. And I mean, every time she looks at you, the love that she has in her eyes is just so amazing. Uh, it's been a, I mean, it's been a great, you know, both your grandparents, grandma and grandpa Sutton, grandma and grandpa Hinegar both just absolutely adore you. And your aunt, Sissy, is just, <laughs> she loves you a ton, too. She's gotten to see you once, and you know, I think it killed her to have to leave. Uh, and that's the trouble right now where we're at. You know, we're a couple hours away from where they live, um, so they don't get to see you as much as they'd love to. But, you know, we FaceTime uh, on our phone, so they get to see you, you know, about two or three times a week. Uh, but, you know, th like I was saying, the things I wonder is, like, you know, my dad, uh, you know, the first three weeks I was around, you know, what were his thoughts and the things that had happened and, you know, with you, what you know, we've been hanging out. We've been watching a bunch of baseball games. Uh, you've been looking all over the place. And I can just see in your eyes, like you already want to take this world and just make it your own, and you want to, you know, take the world by by the horns and just, you know, there. there I see so much potential with you, and you have so many things around here to help you. You know, any kind of dream you have, you know, your grandparents are just going to be there to help you. Your mom and dad are going to be there to help you. Your aunt's going to be there to help you. There's just a ton of ton of opportunity there, and you. Know, what we want to make sure that, you know, any chance you get to try and get to a dream, you know, we want to be there to help you out with that. Uh, you know, I always kind of think about, you know, you, you, this is actually kind of behind the curtain type thing. You know, I always try to wonder about, you know, what my dad wanted to do when he was my age. So, you know, I graduated college. You know, I did what you thought I thought I should do. I went to college. There weren't really any classes that I was into. I mean, I'll, uh, hopefully I'm still doing it to the point you're listening to these. But, you know, I loved writing. I loved to write. But it was definitely a situation where I just didn't understand, you know, it's like, this is fun. This isn't something that I can do because who's going to, you know, who from the Midwest could write something to do anything with? And, you know, I, I don't want that to ever be in your mind. What I want to happen is, you know, when you say, hey, I want to try this thing, I want to try and help you accomplish that. And we we're kind of talked about today with your grandma. And it was a situation where, you know, I told her, and this is kind of my thoughts I always had is I want you to keep doing something until you are basically told not to do it and then keep doing it. You know, that doesn't mean when we tell you to stop picking your nose or something like that, that you keep doing that, but, you know, your dreams. Uh, you know, I, I kind of harpen back uh, to a situation. You know, I went to college. I love playing baseball. I love baseball. You'll probably see that growing up. And what happened is, is I was decent. I was good enough to probably walk on at the college I went to, Quincy University. I may not have ever played a game, but I think I was good enough that I could have probably at least stuck around. But I didn't put in enough work during the summer, and I, I kind of felt bad about that when the season started. And I was there for four days. I went through, they had like a mini spring training endurance camp for a week, and I was there for four days, went back to the fifth and said, listen, I'm not going to be able to do this. And I really regret that situation because the reason I quit, I was definitely slower than the guys. I was not in the best shape, uh, but that's something I could have worked to get better at. 
but I was scared that I was going to hold people back or, you know, somebody was going to tell me, hey, you can't be here. I was scared of failure. That's what, that's all it really was. And I don't want you to be scared of failure. You know, that's the questions I'll ask you whenever you come to me like, dad, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'll ask you why, you know, and I'll definitely say, are you, are you scared to fail? And you shouldn't be scared to fail. If you fail at something, I'm not going to get mad about it. Nobody's going to get mad about it. Because if you fail at something, all you need to do is keep trying to get better at it. And, you know, long windedness on that, I guess, is, um, actually, I don't even know where I was going about that. I just, you know, you'll probably hear that a lot whenever you talk to me is I want you to make sure you go through and try to do the things you want to do. Uh, but I mean, like I said, these first three weeks have been great. You've, you know, and I guess that's probably where it comes from is just seeing, you know, a lot of people talk about newborn babies, not really. And again, this is probably proud Papa talking, but a lot of people talk about how kids, when they're newborns, they just don't do a whole lot. They don't look around a ton. But, you know, you have, you know, you're a strong baby. That's what the doctor said already, because you're kind of have a lot of control over your neck. You're already kind of moving around. And you can see in your eyes, you're kind of like processing these things. And even in your sleep, it seems like you're processing things. And I'm really excited to see, you know, what, what man you become, because I think you're going to, like I said, I think you're going to find something great in this world. And you're going to have so much love and help behind you that, you know, anything you want to do, you're going to be able to do it. And you'll be told that all the time. It's like, oh, well, if you, you know, if you dream it, you can do it. But I really see that for you. I mean, in, in the world we're coming to, uh, I want to make sure you have all the opportunities to do the things you like to do. Of course, you know, I talked to, to your grandpa Sutton about this. You know, if you say, hey, dad, I want to be a baseball player, I will tell you, great, that's awesome. You know, you're, it's going to take hard work. It's not just going to happen. Uh, I know I've talked to a couple of people at the hospital whose kids were trying to, you know, they were good and they put them through camps and things, but they talked about how their kids kind of like, well, they got on their phones more often and they kind of talked to girls more often. I'm not saying you can't do those things, but you know, if you say at 14, Hey dad, I want to be a baseball player. You know, that's, that's going to take effort. That's going to take a lot of work. And, and really that takes anything. Anything takes a lot of work. You know, if you say, Hey, I want to be a writer, you know, great. That's going to take work. You can't, it's just not going to happen. You know, you've got to put in the work and effort. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's one of the things that I feared is that putting in that work was something that you, um, I don't know, I guess, I don't know, I guess I can't really put in good words of what that means. Um, I mean, going back to my baseball story, you know, if I would have put in more work during the summer, you know, maybe I would have felt like I was in better shape and less scared that somebody was going to say you're not good enough. Because you're always going to have people tell you you're not good enough. That's just the way the world works. And you just have to ignore that and power through. Uh, there's only so many great, 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 great people in this world who, you know, are savants at things. Um, and the rest of us have to work harder at it. And that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of people who probably aren't the greatest writers, the greatest baseball players, the greatest this, greatest that, but they're still able to accomplish their dreams. And that's really, I want to make sure you do. Um, you've been sleeping really good so far. I hope I'm not jinxing it. Um, but I went back to work this week, which was really tough, but your mom had some people come over and she did a great, great job. Um, I don't see what else there is, but um, you've peed on me a lot. That's That's been a challenge. Uh, we figured out I wasn't tightening your diapers enough, and you'd kind of leak through the front. Uh, but we're getting better at that. Um, you're healthy. You're smart, it seems. I mean, just from, like I said, just it looks like you want to accomplish a lot in this world. Uh, and I'm excited to, to have you here and to, to you know see you go through all this. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I don't really know what else to really say. I'm trying to see if there's anything else exciting. You got to see your great grandma this past weekend, um, and she just absolutely loved you. Uh, she, I don't think she really wanted to put you down. I think she wanted to take you home. Uh, here in a couple of weekends, you're going to see your great grandpa Hinniger. Um, you know, I've got a, a a good audio file on me and him talking about his past, and it's really cool to to see what you're coming from. You know, um, your grandpa Hinniger. I think you're going to absolutely love. He's you know he's a great man too, along with your grandpa Sutton. Both of those guys are. Um, great, great, great people. You know, your grandmas are also in that same boat. Um, again, you're just surrounded by a lot of, you know, people who love and will help you do so much stuff. And I hope when you're listening to this, I hope you've, you've taken advantage of that and tried to follow your dreams and follow the paths that you want to go to. Um, I mean, I guess talking about me, you know, the, the thing that I ran into when I was younger, I did what I thought I had to do. Uh, it was graduate high school, figure out something that gets you good money, you go to college for that, graduate, get a job, and then, you know, you just work nine to five for the rest of your life. And it wasn't until I turned about 28, uh, a couple of years before you were born, that, you know, Richard and I started that that podcast that hopefully still going on. Hopefully, maybe that's what I'm doing for a living when you're listening to this. 
Uh, and maybe not, who knows, but, you know, from that I started getting back into writing and I, I just absolutely love it. I got to do a short film. Um, I'm just about done with it. So, you know, that's something you probably get to look back on at some point and, you know, hopefully think it's good or maybe it helps, you know, uh, inspire you to do something great or something you love. It doesn't have to be great. I mean, you know, it's hard to tell what the world's going to be like when you're, you know, 16, 20, 25, 30. I mean, it's hard to really tell what, you know, what's going on. I mean, in just the last 15 years from when I've been around, it's just jumped, you know, leaps and bounds. And it's always one of those things that you think like, okay, well, if the things I knew now, I knew then, I probably could have, you know, talked to 22-year-old Sean and told him, you know, hey, you can do this, you can do that. And, and it all really comes back to, to just the, the work to do it. You know, I started writing and I was really scared of failure. Um, I screwed myself by taking a creative writing class and the teacher just wasn't very uh, supportive. And I really let that get me down quickly. Um, I have, I mean, self-esteem is a big thing, but you just have to know that it doesn't matter if somebody who's a, you know, professor says your writing's terrible. It's like, okay, well, I, I want to improve on it and I want to make it better. And that's what you do. And it really doesn't, even if, even if she hates it or he hates it, or, um, somebody doesn't like something you're doing, you know, creatively, or, you know, even in sports, if somebody says, Hey, you're terrible at this. It's like, all right, well, what do I need to do to improve and get better? And that's the thing, I, you know, the thing I want to keep promoting to you is don't be scared to fail. That's how you learn. As long as you learn from a failure, that's great. Um, failures always seems like a four-letter word, but, you know, you're going to make mistakes in life. I'm going to make mistakes in life. And it's just learning from those. And hopefully when you get to that point, you're just, you know, you, you're not scared to take a risk. Um, and especially, like I said, with everybody around you, you know, we'll help you do what you need to do, man. And, uh, uh, I'm just kind of rambling on a little bit more. So, I mean, I don't know where I'm going to put these. I'll probably find some spot to put them and make sure that you're getting them. But, um, you know, uh, just remember that your mom and I both love you. Um, everybody around you loves you. And we're we're excited to see what you accomplish in this world. You know, you're three weeks old already. It's crazy to see, think how fast time's going. But, um, you know, there's going to be at some point, maybe we can get all these together and, you know, you'll we can start our own kind of show, chit chat and back and forth. But. Um, but I'll, I'll leave you there. I'm about ready to do a show with Richard again. It's going to be a draft episode on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I'm going to have to probably buy all those or rent them for you and I to watch to get when you get old enough, but I'll be perfectly fine. It'll be fun. But, um, oh, and if you listen to this and your mom hasn't let you do it yet, we're going to start watching opening day games. All right. So when, when you start going to school, I'll probably try and get you out of those days. So you and I can watch some White Sox baseball opening day. Maybe even we can try and talk her into letting us go to Chicago. We'll see how that works out. We'll see what's going on, all right? So uh, I will, you know, see you in a bit, and just remember that I love you, all right? Bye. So after all that, Richard, um, you've got to listen to our conversations. Do you have any Richard's closing thoughts on this Father's Day episode? Oh, my God. Now I feel on the spot. Um, Yeah. You don't have a whole episode to prepare either. I know, right? Okay. Close. So how, how to close up? Something is something is I I guess, you know, let's let's harken back to what you said earlier that we since 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 you and I have a podcast, it gives us an excuse to record audio with our parents with our with record audio with our fathers and be like, hey, let's, you know, sit down, have a conversation. I'll record it. And then we have that conversation forever. I would put the challenge to everyone out in podcast listening land because everybody's got a smartphone you know it has a recorder on there you could punch up your a recording app on your phone hit record and just sit and just have a conversation with your father or grandfather or whoever and then you take that you upload it into your computer and guess what that's all that's that's forever you have you have essentially immortalized a conversation that you will forever have. Upload it to a Facebook or Twitter or somewhere social networking, yeah, and then totally. it's definitely there forever. Everybody will have it. And if you great. do it, hashtag us. Hashtag recording with dad. All right, well, let me do a little bit of housekeeping before we close out this Father's Day episode. Visit our website. We're at languageofbroance.com. Follow us on Twitter at language of bro email us at eat the beaver at language of thank dad for not eating the beaver those nights and going right for it for us to be here 
Check out the LOB Army Intelligence Reports. Like us on Facebook. Go out and recruit somebody for the LOB Army by getting someone you know, like your dad, to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or Stitcher. Yes, and when you're there, make sure you leave a review. Have dad leave a review. And have Pop Pop leave a review. Yeah, a Pop a pop, pop review. And you can always find us on the Pod Bros Network. Which my son, ever so cleverly, decided to include right before we finished our conversation. <laughs> nice. And he's, if you want... <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I was... He's, he said... He's, he said... Uh, I was like, is, is, do you guys want to say anything else before we're done? And he said, make sure to check us out on Pod Bros Network. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping that... Or he'll... I'm, I'm sure... I'm sure John will like that. <laughs> and if you want to throw a little bit of money in our Father's Day uh, cigarette jar... Go to patreon.com slash language of bromance. Throw some spare coins in our ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Was well, there anything else before we close her out? Um, don't get dad an ashtray. <laughs> because even if he does smoke, I'm sure he has one. <laughs> All right. Well, that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the beaver. Unless you want to make a baby. Yeah. Aww. Thank you.